Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petite. Welcome back to this video series where I walk you through how to make decayed bag. If you want to make decayed bag with me, but this is the first video you are watching, then pause it and go watch the first two videos to find out what supplies are needed to complete this project and how to finish the lining portion of the decayed bag. In this video, we will make the strap connectors, handles, flap and the external front pockets. The link to the pattern and all supplies I used in this tutorial can be found in the description box below this video. Let's begin the tutorial. On the wrong side of the strap connector, draw a line in the center. If you cannot press your fabric, add some double-sided tape on each side of the line. Whenever you are ready, fold both longer edges towards the line. Next, fold the strap connector in half along the center and line up those folded edges. Use some clips to hold them together. Then you can take it to the machine and top stitch along both sides. Cut the strap connector in half to create two separate pieces. Then fold one piece in half and wrap it around the straight edge of the D-ring. Repeat for the other piece. Now we can base them close to the edge. On the wrong side of your handles, draw a line in the center. Next, apply double-sided tape on each side or go to the pressing station. We're going to fold both longer edges towards the line in the same way we've done for the strap connector. If you are not planning to install strap and cups to your handles, and working with fraying fabric, such as cotton canvas, then you need to finish off the short edges. To do that, fold the handles right sides together and line up the folded edges. Then you can stitch along the short edge. After that, trim the seam allowance by half and turn the handle right side out. That edge will look something like that. You can check the sewing instructions for more information. If you are going to install the strap and cups, or planning to use edge coat to cover the row edges, then fold the handle in half and line up those folded edges. Clip everything together. When you are ready, you can top stitch the handle on both sides. But first, let's prep the other handle. Take one of the strap and cups and notice that you have two very different sides. One is very rigid and the other one is smooth. The rigid side has also screw holes, so you know that this is the back. Push the handle into the tunnel. You could add small amount of glue into the tunnel before inserting the handle, but as you can see my handle is quite thick and it's already difficult to insert, so I don't have to worry that my strap end will get loose and fall off. Take your time and make sure you push the handle till the very end. Now lay the handle flat on the table and using an owl or seam ripper, pierce the fabric where the screw holes are. I am going to add a little bit of multi-surface glue into those holes. This will prevent the screws from becoming loose while you are using your back. Then we can insert the screws into the holes and twist them tightly. 
When you are done, make sure your handle is not twisted and install another cup end on the other end. Then repeat the process for the remaining ends on the other handle. On the wrong side of the lining flap piece, you should have marked the magnetic snap placement. So take a washer and center it on top of the dot. Now you can mark the prong placements. We need to cut the fabric where the prongs will go through. So if you worry about making the slits too long, you can insert a pin at the end of the lines. I am going to use a seam ripper to cut the fabric along the lines. But you can also use small scissors or precision blade if you prefer. If you are working with cotton fabric, you may want to apply some fray check glue to those slits to prevent the fabric from fraying. My waterproof fabric does not fray, so I will skip this step today. We are going to install the male part of the snap closure, the one with the little bump. If you compare both parts, you should be able to recognize it right away. Grab your lining flap and insert the prongs into those slits from the right side of the fabric. Sometimes I like to add a small piece of stabilizer before I insert the washer, but my fabric is stable enough so I can insert the washer without it. Then you can bend the prongs in opposite directions. To protect the external fabric from damage, you may want to cover the snap with some fleece or stabilizer, especially if there is no stabilizer attached to the external fabric. Use an iron to fuse it to the fabric or glue it in place like me. Wait until the glue dries, then you can take the external flap and with right side facing each other, line them up together and clip them around all sides. Using one centimeter seam allowance, we are going to stitch along the side, the bottom curved edge, and then the other side. Leave the top edge unstitched, so we can turn the flap right side out. Trim the seam allowance by half, then you can trim off any excess stabilizer to reduce the bulk. Now we can turn the flap right side out. You can press the seam flat, then you're going to top stitch along the finish edges and lastly baste at the top. Take the external slip pocket and install the female part of the magnetic snap closure in the same way we've done on the flap. Take both slip pocket pieces and with right sides together, place them on top of each other. Line them up and pin along the top edge. Now you can sew the seam using 1 cm seam allowance. Open the seam and press it flat. Next, place both pieces wrong sides together and roll the external fabric slightly towards the lining, so when the pocket is finished you will not see the lining fabric. Then press the seam flat. You can clip the pocket around, then top stitch along the finished edge and baste all remaining sides.
you can put the finished slip pocket aside for now. Instead, take the flap and mark the midpoints along the top edge. Then do the same thing on the middle panel. With right side facing up, place the flap on top of the middle panel, match the midpoints and pin along the top edge. We're going to base them together using 5mm seam allowance. Take the shorter number 5 zipper and decide which way you want the zipper to open. I like the zipper to open from left to right. Then place it facing down on top of the flap, line up along the top edge and clip it in place. You can base the zipper using 5mm seam allowance. Otherwise take one external zipper pocket and with right side facing down place it on top. Then move all the clips to hold everything together. Whenever you are ready, sew the seam using 1 cm seam allowance. Bring the panels wrong sides together and keeping the flap open, press the seam flat. Then we're going to top stitch along the seam. Once you have that top stitch, you can bring the flap down and press it flat with an iron. Next, you can take the remaining pocket piece, flip the panel over and line it up at the other side of the zipper with the right side facing together. Clip it in place, then if you prefer you can baste it, otherwise take the top panel and with right side facing down, line it up on top of the zipper. Move the clips to hold everything together, then sew the seam using 1 cm seam allowance. Press the seam allowance towards the top panel and top stitch along the seam. You have three pieces of fabric here and we need to line them up along the sides. Do not worry about the bottom edge because we are going to trim it off in a minute. We're going to baste everything on all three sides. After that, we can trim off the excess fabric at the bottom. Now take the slip pocket and place it under the flap snapping the magnetic closure. Make sure the slip pocket is straight, then we can baste it to the middle panel. That is all for this tutorial. In the next video, we will complete the exterior panels. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.